um, prong two is that if my interlocutor uses different language, I follow them. Um, yeah, that's that's where I that's honestly that's where um, this past summer I I guess a year ago now. Ah! I stepped in it with a family member um, where I came back like on fire, like after having this, you know, like, yes, like this language that I crave, you know, and it was actually with my mom in the car on a three hour road trip um, where I uh, <laughs> subjected her to listening to Between the World and Me, um, which is amazing. But afterwards, um, you know, got into a conversation and started using language that just like, and she said, she said, you know, I feel like you've gone to school and you've got all of these words and I just don't know how to talk to it. And I was like, damn, you know, I mean, in the moment I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I hear you. Um, it's really hard. And I think adapting the language and then also um, depending on, uh, again, like context is everything, but depending on the relationship being able to have the one-on-one. -on -one. Like, there are so many times on Facebook where I've seen, you know, people say transgendered, um, right, or preferred pronouns, um, or, you know, uh, handy capable. Um, and I have separately messaged, you know, privately messaged and said, like, hey, you know, it's transgender um, because it's not something that happens to somebody. They just are. Like, we don't say Latinx, you know? <laughs> what? Um, you know? Uh, it's some people within the disabled community find it very, uh, you know, uh, like condescending to be talked about in, you know, all these other like euphemisms, right? Um, so I think um, listening to how, and, and language changes, listening to how communities are talking about themselves, um, and then I think be trying to be advocates, um, but sometimes it's in the one-on-one, -on -one and then uh, what I would say is uh, also to not have this bystander effect of right, like somebody else is gonna talk about it. Um, that it's important that we all follow up and follow through. Um, and in terms of like, uh, uh, you know, the language, yeah, following somebody else's lead, but also making sure that, that it gets put out there in some way, whatever is appropriate for the context. But checking oneself always, yeah. Thank you. Oh, hi. I knew I'd get to ask a question because you wouldn't have to like run and chase me down. Um, hi, I'm Lisa, she, her, hers. Uh, and my question is partly brought up because you, thank you for making the point that like everybody doing work should get paid as often as possible. Um, and my question is about mental health, uh, especially working in the academy where the uh, mental health services will give you four visits per degree. Um, PhDs take a while, guys. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering how we can balance all the emotional labor we're asking of our EDI committees, um, of the consultants that we bring in to speak about their experience. How can we balance all the labor that, that needs to get done and that we need um, people's voices for with the, the already crushing workload of underpaid artists and underpaid academics? That's a relief because I don't. <laughs> but thank you for asking the question. I want to reiterate that the phenomenon you, you name absolutely exists and the problems you name absolutely exist in different forms in different places, but consistently enough that I would name them a phenomenon. Um, right now in my academic career, um, I have energy and strength to spare. It's not always going to be true for any one person, but I perceive it to be part of my responsibility to throw my shoulder against that wheel while I can, so that someone else who can't doesn't have to. Um, and yet I don't want to support a system that underpays, undercompensates, over requires, and I'm in that moment 
in which next year the school where I work gets to decide whether it wants to keep me. So even that is a, com a complicating factor in the how much labor do I do question and of what kind. Yes, thank you. Yes. I just have a quick response to that question because I think it's really, really important. Um, and I can't speak to how this might work on a student level, although I think it could be translated. But at University of Wisconsin-Madison, um, those of us in ethnic studies have been doing a year-long study about you know, some of these anecdotal things about all the extra labor that those folks do to draft language to be included in tenure and promotion letters. You know, when I went up for a promotion this year, there's no space on the form for that invisible work. It's invisible to the guys in suits who move the money around. It's not invisible to me or my colleagues. But I think kind of getting together as a group and deciding, on and we're all going to include this language about what we do so that it becomes visible is really, really important. So just a thought, I'd be happy to talk to you more about that if that's something you're interested in thinking about. I was actually going to, I'm going to co-sign on that as one who also performs a lot of that emotional labor. Because, um, you know, my previous institution, I spent a lot of time being the place where people came with all sorts of concerns. Um, uh, there, there was a running joke in my department that I had a more close relationship with you know, people outside of my own particular area, because I was in the theater studies area, um, I was uh, closer with people in other areas than my own area. And I think part of it is also back to what Jen was talking about, which is naming it, because it became a joke that I was like, that's actually not funny. Why am I the only one performing this labor? Why am I closer with students in your area than you are? <laughs> which is a valuable question to ask. Um, you know, and, and so I think naming it and knowing, and, and that's the thing, I also name it knowing that that comes with potential consequences. Because um, I'll, I'll keep saying this until the cows come home. You know, in the end, it meant that I left my institution. But I was also willing to say that, you know, I wasn't going to compromise my own values for that. And if, you know, naming what it is is a problem, then that's not where I need to be. So, um, and I also recognize that there is privilege inherent in that because not everyone has that kind of flexibility. I'm lucky enough that I just have a, a spouse who is willing to move wherever I, I ask and two dogs that don't really have a choice. So <laughs> 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 but, but, I, but I think that's the thing and I also think that in some respects uh, allyship becomes really important. Um, I spent a lot of time during my time at my institution saying things like, hey, anyone interested in backing me up on this? Oh, nobody? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, you know, I mean, there's all sorts of emotional labor, and there, there came points where I had to tag out, and, and, and I told, I was, you know, uh, there was one other person in my department that was very active with me in having these conversations, and there were times when I had to email him and say, hey, I got to tag out because I'm about five seconds from becoming the angry black woman stereotype, so it's time for me to back up a little bit. And then, and then I would let him know when I was tagging back in. So, you know, I think we really have to name it. We have to name it. So, on that note, we are at that particular point where we need to, or where I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask for all of us to turn around, find people close to us, and really start thinking about one thing that you can do and take with you that you're willing to commit to in your organization. And I'm going to ask my panelists to kind of circle around answer questions, you know, potentially spark some ideas, et cetera. And then what we're going to do is, like, in the last, like, two minutes, I'm not going to ask everyone to share, but what I will ask is that maybe you share with LMDA at our email address so that we can circulate. Sound like a plan? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm not going to do it. Since I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so feel free. Nobody got cards tonight. 
Right. Right. Basically, we're just going to circle back up, and then we have to do it. We're just here to help. So if you're going to hear ideas and ways to help us, then you can help us. <laughs> I, I need to get rid of this.
Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. I know, not enough time, all the things to discuss. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then you're. So <laughs> I love it. Uh, I got some hips and I got some lips. All right. <laughs> and some faces. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Woo. So I'm hoping that uh, we all had a very productive conversation, that we've come away with some ideas. Like I said, because I know the conversation may still be happening, I'm not going to ask people to share in the moment. But what I will encourage is, like I said, for you to share the ideas that you came up with to with us to us so that we can potentially put that together as a resource and disseminate. So in those moments when you're like, I don't know what to do, you can go look at that list and see if there's something that appeals to your heart and to your mind and to your sensibilities as a human being. Um, and so on that, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you to our panelists for participating in all of this. And because no conference plenary is complete without some words from our amazing president, I am going to hand over the microphone to Ken. Thanks. I'm going to go last because we've got some announcements first. Well, just really quickly, um, this water bottle was left upstairs in the boardroom. Uh, does it belong to... There you go, Scott. So I've got it right here. Um, and then um, one of our lovely volunteers is missing a gold ring with a with a big jewel on it that has water watercolor colors. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen that, but if we could maybe keep an eye out for it before we go. Awesome. And then uh, we're going to... I'm going to pass it off to Ken in a second, but I just want to remind everyone to join us if you're planning on joining us at the banquet tonight at HS Lordships. Uh, I the banquet will the food will open at 8 p.m. The bar will begin around 7 7:30, um, so you have some time to get there. We're going to be decorating some pride, uh, some pride banners and posters while that bar is open, so it's going to get real fun real quick. All right, here's Ken. Um, uh, if you are able um, to help us clean up, we invite you to fold uh, one or two or three chairs and stack them as two stacks in the back and one stack here, and then we'll um, take the light chairs uh, elsewhere. We're, we're pretty much wrapped up here. Um, the banquet is at HS Lordships at 99 Seawall, but basically university runs straight down Berkeley out to the water. If you take that straight out west, follow the sun if you can still see it, because clouds are coming in, um, uh, over the bridge, over the, over the freeway, and onto the marina, and then just keep going, and then you'll eventually hit the pier, and you turn left um, if you're driving or giving someone else directions. If you're staying at uh, the Doubletree Berkeley Marina, um, it's a lovely about 18-minute walk from there to like cross the main road and then walk along the water. There's a lovely path. You just keep going and you will hit HS Lordships. Um, and then I I if you um, uh, have arranged rides, that's fantastic. If you haven't um, and need some help, we'll figure out uh, a way. And if you have extra space in your car or your shared ride, please kind of raise your hand and someone will uh, find you. Uh, Mickey does over there and Adam does too. Um, yes, and Bernardo does too. So. Um, thank you um, for that. And does anyone have any final questions before we break? Um, Martine has a final thought. So, all of you who are uh, willing and able, if you would help us clear some of these chairs and really make sure that we pick up after ourselves in, in a way that, you know, I'm sure whatever parental guidance unit might have been in your life would like you to. Uh, that would be amazing, and that's my last thought. Um, so we think similarly, the two of us. Um, so yeah, th help us clean up. Thank you for your attendance. We hope to see many of you at the banquet, and if we if we're not going to see you there or at Pride Parade tomorrow, hopefully we'll see you next year. Please stay in touch. Thank you, everyone. Break.